LG shutting down their smartphone lineup is not surprising. There were so many signs, and that's what this video is about, why they couldn't survive and what it means for us. But let me be clear, I'm still very sad that it's happening. So this was the last LG phone that I tested, and I guess will ever test, and it definitely turned a lot of heads because the screen turned. And this two screen form factor was definitely innovative. It led to a lot of interesting use cases with navigation, multitasking, and my personal favorite use case, gimbal mode for the camera. So it was definitely different, but why wasn't it a smashing success? By LG focusing on the spectacle and the innovation, they abandoned the fundamentals. For example, when the screen is swiveled, the power button is really hard to reach and the volume rockers are also really hard to reach. Being able to access the power button for your phone is definitely fundamental and kind of a basic thing that you need to get right. They focused on giving this phone a pop-out selfie camera, but they didn't focus on making the software experience good. There were repeatable glitches that I just had happen on a daily basis, and also the chipset for this phone, the 765G, was an older chipset in comparison to other phones that were launching at $1,000. And my unit came with so many pre-installed applications. It just felt like this form factor was not enough to justify all of those sacrifices. And the same thing happened with the LG G5. Do you remember this phone? Like the first modular phone, LG pitched this and it felt like it may be huge. The bottom portion of the phone popped out, leading you to obviously replace the battery, but LG was also promising a ton of modules to really change the experience of using a phone. But as my 2016 self so gently put it in my full review, the design just felt dated from day one. Over a month later, the G5 still only comes with two modules. If LG really wanted to push the modularity of the G5 and make the sacrifices made for it justified, I really feel like they should have many more than two modules out after over one month of the phone being out. In trying to chase this innovation of being one of the first modular phones on the market, LG left behind a lot of the fundamentals. The phone did not look that good, it kind of looked like a prototype, and it also did not feel that good even though it was made out of metal. Add to that a heavily skinned software experience that was just worse than a lot of other phones on the market at the time, and the naming scheme of calling the modules friends, and they did not have a smashing success on their hands. And that brings us right into LG's naming, because honestly, you cannot talk about LG without talking about the catastrophe that is what they named their products. They were definitely on thin ice before the V10, but it kind of feels like that was a turning point where everything went downhill and got inconsistent. And a lot of brands honestly like royally screw up the naming scheme, like one in particular decided to call their phone a Roman numeral one year, but then refer to it as 10, creating a daily dilemma for me, like should I correct people? Should I let them say X? and other companies have also just skipped numbers. So definitely no company is like incredible and nails it every time. But not only were LG's names not memorable and kind of weird, they also didn't tell you anything about the device. Like what does ThinQ mean? Word of mouth marketing is super powerful and it's hard for me to imagine someone saying to their friend, oh, did you see the new V60 ThinQ from LG? I'm definitely not a naming expert, but I just feel like I could have done a better job than ThinQ. It feels like LG was so stuck on being different that they wanted to be different in every single way, including naming, and some things they just should have done the same. Like consistent naming is a best practice for a reason. That's not to say that they weren't a great brand. Like they did bring us so much innovation. The phone that you're holding in your hand right now was probably influenced and has one feature at least that LG introduced initially. Two rear cameras, an ultra wide camera on smartphones, 18 by nine displays, double tap to wake, quad core processors, dual screen phones. All of these things were introduced to us first by LG. LG has been one of the most innovative brands over the last decade. It's just a shame that they couldn't nail the other things that you need to do to be successful. Like if all you do is innovate, then the big dog brands are going to see what you're doing and copy those innovations and then market them better. Kind of like how Instagram saw Snapchat with stories being successful and they took the idea and now Instagram is just worth so much more than Snapchat is. And another thing to consider is that reputation and your personal brand as a company is one of your biggest intangible assets and where iPhones and Samsung phones hold their value over time, LG phones really don't. And that does not help customers feel confident in their purchasing decision. It makes them question what the value really is if they can just wait a few weeks and then get hundreds of dollars off the initial purchase price. And what does this mean for you if you're like an LG customer, like you own a phone? Well, LG is going to be supporting software updates for three years, which is definitely good to see. And their impact on the smartphone industry will also never be forgotten. And it's gonna be long lasting, even though they're out of the business now. And on a personal level, LG was like the first brand to ever believe in me and send me a smartphone phone review unit with the LG G4. Um, so they're always going to mean a lot to me and have a place in my heart. And I'm sure that a lot of you were really big fans of them as a brand. It's always sad to see a company step out of the smartphone space because it just means less innovation and less competition. I feel like a lot of the tech community is just like high key mourning this loss right now. So I'm gonna link below MKBHD's 
Michael Fisher's and Mr. Who's the Boss's video in case you want to check it out. If you want to reminisce with me, you could check out my LG G6 video right here, or you can continue your initiation into the MBT community and check out another video that I picked for you right here. Thanks so much for watching this one. I will catch you in the next video. Bye.